The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance that provides as a platform for the organelles to operate within the cell. It is a home to many activities of the cell as it contains molecules and enzymes that are crucial in the breakdown of the waste. The shape of a plant cell can be rectangular, square, or hexagon. I'm gonna make a hexagon this time. Using a thick cardboard, let's make a circle depending on the size of the cell you want. With a ruler, divide the circle into half. Using a protractor, mark 60 degrees from the midpoint since the hexagon has 6 sides, so 360 degrees divided by 6. Connect the two points. Do it to the other part of the circle. Connect the end points at the edge of the circle to form a hexagon. Now that we have the hexagon, create more of these and pile them up depending on the height you want it to have. Here, I created a stack of 7 hexagons with a height of 3 cm and on the top part, I painted the positions of the organelles. Now, this is our platform. Next, we have the cell membrane. It is the semi-permeable membrane that is present within the cell wall. It is composed of a thin layer of protein and fat. The cell membrane plays an important role in regulating the entry and exit of specific substances within the cell. In here, we're gonna use a thin cardboard. Since the height of our platform is 3 cm, we need our cell membrane to be higher, let's say 4 cm. The length of the strip to be made must be equal to the perimeter of the hexagon. And here's the finished product. It will be put around the hexagon later. For the third one, we have the cell wall. Cell wall is only found in plant cells. It is a rigid layer that is located outside the cell membrane. The primary function of the cell wall is to protect and provide structural support to the cell. It also filters the molecules passing in and out of the cell. Using the thick cardboard, create a strip with a height of 4 cm and a length of 20 cm. The length of a side of my hexagon is 13 cm, but the cell wall must be longer, so I made it 20 cm. Create 6 more of this. Afterwards, poke some holes on the cell wall for the plasma desmatas. The plasma desmata acts as a channel between the cell walls of plants to allow materials to pass from one cell to another. If you want the top part to be smoother, you can use masking tapes. Here are the finished products. Nucleus. The nucleus is a membrane-bound structure that is present only in eukaryotic cells. The vital function of a nucleus is to store DNA or hereditary information required for cell division, metabolism, and growth. It is a control center of the cell, therefore it operates all of the cell's activities. Using the thin cardboard, create three circles with different divisions. For the first one, I removed one-fourth of the circle. I cut the radius in the second one and cut the last circle into two parts. Using the glue gun, connect the circles like this. Insert the second one to the first one and then the semicircles. After that, form the nucleus by using shredded papers and glue diluted in water. Paste it in our previous created circle. The one fourth of the circle was cut so that we can see the nucleolus inside. For the nucleolus, just use the shredded papers and glue to make a tiny sphere. We just need one fourth of it so use a cutter. Paste it then at the center of the nucleus. Paint the nuclear pores as well as the nucleus and the nucleolus. For the fifth one, we have the ribosomes. They are the smallest membrane-bound organelles which comprise DNA and protein. They are the sites of protein synthesis, hence also referred to as the protein factories of the cell. In here, we're gonna need the grains of sand. We can use a colander to make sure that the grains are equal in size. Afterwards, soak it in a paint diluted in water. Leave it for 30 minutes. Once dried, it will look like this. Next, we have the endoplasmic reticulum. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, the rough ER and the smooth ER. The rough ER has ribosomes attached to it, therefore it is called rough, while the smooth ER don't. The endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane-enclosed passageway for transporting materials such as the protein synthesized by ribosomes. For the rough ER, we're gonna need the thick cardboard. Create strips of any length and a height of about 2.5 cm. Connect the end parts using tape to form a circle. Fold the circle to form flat tubes or depending on your reference. 
use stick glue to paste the bottom part of the folded circle. You can have various shapes depending on your reference. Once painted, it will look like this. But we need to attach the ribosomes yet. Cover the rough ER's body with glue. Sprinkle it then with our sand grains or ribosomes. The dried ones now look like these. You can have different structures of it. For the smooth ER, we need strips made of thin cardboard. It can have different heights but not exceeding to 2.5 cm. Smooth ER can be flat tubes but mostly they are round. So let's roll this strip to form a tube. You can put stick glue on top of it to make it smoother. Just like these, it have different sizes. Bulgy Complex Its main function is the packaging and secretion of proteins received from endoplasmic reticulum. It packages it into membrane-bound vesicles which are then transported to various destinations within the cell. Just like how we did it with the rough endoplasmic reticulum, let's just use a thick cardboard to create flat tubes. The Golgi body is made of flat tubes but decreasing in length. The Golgi body also has tube-like parts, so we're gonna use the ballpen caps and scratch paper for that. Just cover the ballpen cap with the glued paper. And here it is! Lysosome they perform the function of cellular waste disposal by digesting worn out organelles, food particles, and foreign bodies in the cell. Lysosomes are rarely found in plant cells because the cell wall is thick enough to protect the cell from foreign substances. For the lysosomes, we need the medicine pockets, shredded paper, and glue. Cut the pockets and cover them up with the shredded paper. Since they are made in the Golgi complex, I color them violet. Same with the Golgi complex. Next, the lysosomes are peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are small, membrane-enclosed cellular organelles containing oxidative enzymes that are involved in a variety of metabolic reactions, including several aspects of energy metabolism. Using the shredded paper and glue, form tiny circles. That's it! Chloroplast. Aside from cell wall, chloroplasts are also found only in plant cells. It is the site of photosynthesis, which is the process of food making. We plants. are gonna need scratch papers, glue, needle, and thread, masking tape, cardboards, and stick glue. Let's create first its capsule. Draw the shape on the thick cardboard. You can use my guide. We are only gonna cut this butterfly like shape. Once cut, use the tape to connect the end parts. After that, use the shredded papers and glue to cover the capsule. For the thylakoids, we need the puncher, glue, needle, and cardboards. Using the puncher, cut holes from the cardboard. We have now the thylakoids. Using the needle and thread, sew the tiny circles. Be careful, I recommend you to wear gloves while doing this. The finished product looks like this. Cover it with glue to make it firm and the circles won't scatter. It's time to put it in the capsule. First, cut the granum or stack of thylakoids into half. Put the first halves into the capsule. For the connecting lines, plot the positions of your granum in a thin cardboard. Draw the connecting lines and cut. In this way, it will be easier to connect the granums especially when your chloroplast is too small. After putting the connecting lines, add the other halves of the granule. And here is the final product. This is the most complicated organelle to make, I guess. But, but it's worth a try. Next, we have the mitochondria. They are the powerhouse of the cell because they provide energy by breaking down carbohydrate and sugar molecules. They are also responsible for cell respiration. We are gonna use the same capsule we use in the chloroplast. Just use stick glue to paste a strip of cloth inside the capsule. Just like the reference, we must do curved folds here. After painting it, add some ribosomes. For our last organelle, we have the central vacuole. 
it occupies around 30% of the cell's volume in a mature plant cell. The vital function of central vacuole apart from storage is to sustain turgid pressure against the cell wall. For the central vacuole, we just need to cut bean-like shapes from biggest to smallest. Pile it up and use glue and scotch paper to create its form. Now it looks like a giant bean.